So that was an allegretto, number five, from Giuliani's Opus 50. And follow the lesson for free and pick up all the tips. But if you're interested, I do have an edition of all 32 works in Opus 50, and there's a link for that in the description. So in this, in this piece, we do have an upper line kind of melody, but it's very, um, there's lots of figuration and it's very intertwined with the lower voice and the arpeggios in the piece. So you can practice the voices separately, but it won't be as easy in this particular piece compared to some other works. So the upper line melody. You know, you can practice that on its own. Sometimes it'll work out better than other times, depending on where the rests are and things like that. But give that a try. One other thing I'll mention is the final two bars of the piece. Now I've chosen in my edition to do a bar A. Which sounds quite nice and, and you know, all the notes get to sustain. It makes for a nice ending. What's probably more in line with the actual texture of the piece is just to stay in first position and get your A minor chord here. So I'll let you choose which one you want to do. Or the way I've notated it. So you can make your own choice in that regard. So let's just do a walkthrough of the piece and I'll point out a couple of other um, small things. So in this piece, there's, there's a number of places where you play the C with your fourth finger. So depending on what level you're at, just be careful of the alignment of your hand. If my hand is misaligned, I can't even reach that C. If my hand is aligned, my knuckles are parallel with the strings, and my palm is nice and close to the guitar, I can easily reach that C or the G or an imaginary extra note. So, but even a little bit of misalignment and suddenly I'm overextending my finger or I can't even reach that note. So just swing that hand into place. In terms of the right hand fingering, I've notated just a couple of small spots where we use a double thumb. Just to get you through that, that bass line arpeggio. Uh, so just a couple of spots where you can use the thumb twice. Besides that, you're mainly just alternating the fingers on the upper voice. Sometimes we'll throw in the A finger if the bass and the upper note are really far apart, or if you just if it's an awkward string crossing, you can throw the A in, but mainly just alternating those fingers. So let's do a walkthrough. to do that stretch there. If you find that a little bit difficult, you know, you can kind of let go of fingers once you've connected the two notes. I can do it with keeping my first finger down. You may not be able to, so just lift your first finger if you need to. But because of the C that comes afterwards, it's, it's I thought it was too much to, you know, change positions and you have to let go of some of the bass notes, so we end up with that stretch. Giuliani played on a smaller instrument, so it prob probably was done this way. And just keep those notes down. Keep your fingers down until a new note is played in each voice. So it's kind of an, a chain link, right? Like one note sustains while the other one comes in. So just make sure you're, you're really sustaining each individual line. get that D sharp there and you end up 
in that A minor shape there. And then here, you can either jump up or just stay in first position with a little shift. Really nice little piece um, in A minor just to kind of uh, appropriate for a number of situations and great for students. Um, lots of little little things um, because of the, the, the C with the fourth finger and a couple of little stretches and just slightly more um, complex right hand fingering. Uh, probably, probably um, you know, early to mid intermediate, um, but just a couple of little things that you'll have to pay attention to and making sure your technique is in order.